Hi, this is Luke from Jim Heights Bail Wagons here today. We're going to help you set up a pull type machine. A lot of stuff we're going to talk about carries through for pretty much any of them. But uh, we've got a nice 1036 here. We're going to do a load with you. I'm going to show you how to set it up and get through the first load or two. The thing about any of these machines, you're only going to stack your hay as good as the bales you're making. So as you can see here, we've got a real nice late model baler. It's got real nice square edges. The length is consistent throughout the field, which is one of the biggest problems people run into. This particular baler has got a 16 by 18 chamber size. The machines will do a 14 by 18 two tie, 16 by 18 two tie. Self propelled to do a three tie bale as well, various sizes. The biggest thing you want to look out for is the length. So as you can see, this one's about a 46 inch bale. So they made two basic varieties over the last 60 years. They made a two wide machine, and that's for like a 42 to about a 48 inch bale. Puts two bales across the machine, and they made a three wide variety. They'll put three bales across, and they're only about a 34 to about a 40 inch bale. So when we're setting up the machine, what I like to do, if that's your first time going, we're going to load about six bales on the second table. Then we're going to check it, see where we sit, and then we can make our adjustments. So on any of these machines, I don't care if it's a pull type or self-propelled, 60 years old, brand new. The two biggest problems people have with them is they'll damage these push-off feet bars, and they'll damage the sliding load rack. The way to avoid that, there's an interlock on all of these machines. So when the push-off feet are come home, this bar gets pushed, which unlocks the control to raise and lower the load rack. That can be overridden. It could be damaged. could not even be functioning or set up properly. Sometimes if you're hot and you're tired and you've been out all day and, you know, the wife left and the dog ran off, you can grab that load rack control after you put the feet in or out and grab it and you overpower the lockout. And then you bend your feet and make your day worse. So I always tell people, before you move the load rack table up or down, grab your push-off feet control handle and run them in. Sometimes you'll hear a clunk or a clunk clunk. Sometimes you'll just hear a relief valve squealing. Sometimes you can look down from the cab or the tractor seat and see the top of the feet. Just make sure they're in before you go up or down, and then you won't bend the bars. On the sliding load rack, easiest thing to do on that is just make sure it's all the way to the back before you ever raise this up. The problem is people get a half load of hay on there and they'll raise it up. And this one has a nice hydraulic ram and a cable. The earlier models had a brake assembly kind of held onto this track. So what would tend to happen is you'd raise that half load of hay up till it got about 45 degrees. And one of a couple things will happen, it will either slam all the way to the back and bend up all the bars and the fingers, or it'll sit there and catch and tear up the track, bend the bars, bend the base that the bars are welded to or bolted to. And it just ruins the whole machine. So the easiest way to do it, some of the newer self-propelled have a switch or a lever. You can crack open that cylinder, and ease the load to the back, that works. But honestly, the easiest way of doing it on any of the machines, get your half a load of hay on, look ahead in the field, see where you're at, and then put like six bales or four bales on the second table and trip it by hand several times until it's all the way to the back. Then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> 